being from the south side of Chicago, uh, if anybody knows about Chicago, they know that gangs are very rampant in Chicago. Uh, for me, sports was my way out. You know, so I always stayed busy. My parents supported me, but you know, I think it was more so for me to make sure I stay focused. You know, I saw football as a way, you know, to get me out of Chicago and to get me into school and get my school and paid for. So uh, I, I really excelled, and and I thought it was me. You know, I, I thought it was you know my athletic ability. You know, uh, the way I handled myself. You know, I had a nice little game plan of what, you know, how I was going to get to a Division One school, and and Notre Dame was always a dream of mine. Even in the sense that other people were already saying, hey, you know what, Notre Dame, you're not big enough, you know, you should go probably to a smaller school, you're never gonna play. But the other part of that is, is when I got to Notre Dame, you know, I pretty much had a lifestyle that was a lifestyle in destruction. You know, I was on a path to destruction. And, uh, you know, with alcohol, uh, you know, girls and all the other stuff, the temptations that, you know, we are faced with, well, I partook in all those temptations and it caught up with me. I knew at that moment I was in trouble. You know, all the other stuff had caught up with me and I began to think about what would my life be like if I wasn't here at Notre Dame. I began to think about my sac the sacrifices that my dad and my mom, my mom being a school teacher herself, and my dad being a, a mailman, the sacrifice that they put, you know, to get me to this point. And, and, and at that point in time, I remember the first time in my room I prayed in like two years. And I asked God for two things. I asked him for a wife, and I asked him for an opportunity to get me back into Notre Dame where I wouldn't be kicked out. I didn't want to go back home. I didn't want to have to deal with the embarrassment and the shame of uh, not making it and being just another statistic of a, a dumb jock getting kicked out of school. And I prayed that God would give me an opportunity to stay at Notre Dame and not get kicked out. And he did one thing right away. I met my wife, Latanya Wynn. I met, I met her probably about a couple of weeks after I prayed that prayer. And we got married three months later. My dad uh, pretty much had disowned me and told me, you know, if I got married, he, he threatened me and told me, hey, if you get married, you know, you might as well just, you know, just sever our relationship, you know, as, as father and son. And, and that was so hurtful to me, but I knew that God had sent me this woman and it was painful going through the process, but yet and still, it was something that God had already ordained. I didn't know it at the time, but looking back on it now, he brought my wife and I together as a tag team. And from that point on, I remember when I got married, things began to solely shift. God did a thing in my life so quickly from getting up, from having the opportunity to uh, not being in Notre Dame and getting kicked out of school to now being on the dean's list in less than a year, you know, and, and God doing the impossible. And, 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 and then my peers, you know, respecting me as a leader on my team because I wasn't a star player on my team. I, I wasn't the guy that, you know, was, had all the accolades and things of that nature. You know, um, I remember Lou Holtz told me that he couldn't make me captain because I didn't have the grades. And I went from Lou Holtz telling me that he couldn't trust me to be a captain to, you know, being one of the leaders on the team. So I know God can, can totally shift a thing. And even though at that time I hadn't given my life to Christ, but I began to go down this journey where I began to, to really just learn more about God. I began to go to church, me and my wife, uh, and, just, and just really tap in to you know, just what, what God, who he was, a relationship. I didn't have that before, but now I was building that relationship with him. And he was, and I, and I thank God that he was patient with me because I didn't just jump all the way in, you know what I mean? And really when you're at that moment where you have no place else to turn, God is right there. He said, he'll never leave you and forsake you. And he didn't leave me or forsake me. Even in my sin, at my lowest point, he heard my prayer just as clear as day. And all I had to do was just, he was waiting on me. You know, I, I think about how God spared my life when me and my high school buddy was walking from the L train and a group of guys tried to jack us for our starter jackets. And my knucklehead friend was like, no, I'm not giving it up. You know, uh, we actually, actually almost getting shot. And right when the time when the guy pulled out the gun, some undercover detectives swooped in 
and kind of just, you know, saved us from I don't know what would have happened. So I look at all these different turn of events or why God did what he did for such a time as this. And it's not just to play football. It's for me to have an impact on people's lives and just to let them know that, you know, how awesome God is and, and what he's doing, you know, in, in, in my life to let them know that he can do the same thing in, in anybody else's life, even when the, stack, when the chips are stacked against you, you know, that he can, he can do it. So, you know, I, I, I look at that journey and, you know, and even when I went to Jacksonville, just having the opportunity to go to a team that of, of, of leaders that believed in Christ. You know, when you get the star quarterback at that time, Mark Brunel, who was a Pro Bowl player, to, you know, to uh, invite, you know, the rookies when they first get there to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to invite you guys to my house. I'm going to have a Bible study. You know, uh, why don't you guys come out? You know, and, and my wife and I going to that Bible study that night, uh, being water baptized, you know, and, and just just going through, you know, that journey and just how God just provided and, you know, made provisions for us when we had nothing to do with it. So, um, uh, I mean, it's it's been awesome. I think, uh, you know, that message, if I can just share with anyone out there, no matter where, what you're going through, where you've been, what you did, it's not about that, but it's about where you could go with Christ. You know, and, and, and when people say you can't do something, when they say you're not gonna do something, and sometimes it may come even from a loved one, you know, uh, to, to pretty much speak those words of death over you, you know, over your, your dream, you know, over, over uh, you know, uh, that hope that's on the inside of you. You know, God can do anything. You know, I'm a bear, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a witness that through me, he was able to, to just, you know, just, just to overcome all the odds. You know, through him, I, I should say, through him, I was able to overcome all the odds. And it wasn't me. With all the people that may say, hey, you can't do this, through the disappointments, past hurt, past pain, he is a restorer, he is a healer. He can, he can bring back what no man could do. He can open doors that no man can close. So I know if you just put your faith in God, he can do that thing in a, in a second. I mean, there is no time limit with him. There is no impossibility. You know, uh, a setback could be a, your greatest comeback. I've done things that I didn't even think were even possible. Um, and it's only been because of God and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, um, you know, getting drafted in the first round was only the beginning. Uh, I felt that, hey, if I played three or four years, that's the average. They say the NFL stands for not for long. So I figured if, if I played three years, that's the average or four years, you know, I, I've, I've done more than I can even do. But God blessed me to be able to play 13 years in the NFL. You know, I, I've played uh, six years with the Redskins, five years starting my year in Jacksonville with the Jaguars, a year in New York, a year in New Orleans. And I know that every team that he had me on, he had me there for a purpose, uh, to be uh, uh, that guy in the locker room where the locker room is not always a pretty place, man. You know, you, 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 you know, you, know, you get all types of, you know, uh, different things. And you got guys that are making millions of dollars, guys that, you know, to them, you know, they don't need to submit or humble themselves or, or have that relationship with Christ. I'm honored that I was one of those guys to, to, to be able to, uh, you know, fight for Christ, to not compromise, uh, to be pure. You know, to do all those things where in the NFL, in the professional world, you know, uh, I mean, the media is always showcasing so many other things. So uh, my wife and I, we felt also the need to start our foundation, which is the, the Family of Faith Foundation. And uh, we started um, a program, Adopt a Child program, where we have 150 to 200 kids come and we love on them and we talk to them about God and, and Jesus and we bring in different celebrity athletes that come in and just share this day with them. And my wife and I also started the, the Pamper Me Godly uh, Foundation, which caters to the woman. You know, so those are some of the things that we're doing and, and I thank God that he's used my platform in the NFL to be able to impact others. And, uh, and even right now, even after playing, after retirement, I know God is, is doing uh, a lot more and, and getting involved in NASCAR with Coach Gibbs and, 
and uh, you know my wife is starting a uh, cosmetic beauty line to kind of go along with the Pamper Me Godly, the Alexis Kennedy line for women in beauty. And uh, you know we're just you know really just so uh, just elated of what God is doing, and, and and it's been an unbelievable ride, and and we just continue to just grow in Christ. You're part of a of a fraternity where you. You know, for years, you know, looking out from the inside, you know, you've always wanted to be a part of this fraternity, this brotherhood of, of the professional athlete. And then when you find yourself in it, you know, you, you're like, man, I'm, I mean, it's awesome. It's an unbelievable feeling. But then what comes along with it as well? The temptations are so much greater. Uh, you know, uh, guys just having more money than they know what to do with. You know, so you have people coming out of the woodworks. You're always a target. You know, you you, you find yourself not really being able to trust too many people. Uh, you know, also just the fact of, uh, you know, the temptation of, of, of whenever you go on the road, you know, there are women waiting there, you know, like sharks, you know, waiting, you know, for, and how, however way they know that we're even at that hotel, you know, and, and, and but they're there. And, and that temptation. But you know what, the one thing about it is, is that, you know, just we had a, a band of brothers, you know, and, and we're talking about this right now in, in, our, in our Bible studies on Wednesdays at ICLV, accountability, you know, and, and we just had a group of guys that were accountable to each other. You know, it's a decision, you know, uh, and I think we all have that free will. You know, yeah, the temptation is there. You know, Jesus was tempted, you know, but, you know, through the word and, and, and he and, and, and knowing, you know, what I'm saying making that decision, you know, uh, of not going that other way. I mean, that's the greatest example. And 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 just just as I said earlier, I mean, the temptations are there, but, you know, you have a decision. You know, I, I've, I've sometimes got a little little start hitting hitting my chest a little bit. And thank God I had my, my wife just, you know, to pop my bubble, you know, and. and <laughs> And, and, and let me know that, uh, you know, that I'm, I'm nobody without Christ. And uh, where we came from, you know, it continues to serve as um, a reminder, you know, uh, you know, what God brought us through, what he brought us out of. It's a continual reminder of, you know, what happens, you know, when you, when you don't trust God, when you don't submit, when you don't humble yourself and remove the pride. You know, so, uh, you know, I thank God that he's given me that strength to overcome.